scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Pastor Yemi, thank you. Thank you and your lovely wife, Pastor Bimbo, and the leadership of this great church. Thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I salute every man and woman of God. May the Lord bless and honor you. Pastor Emosfenwa, God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm just meeting the person who ministered um, before me for the first time. I was at the Rotunda, the incredible, incredible dispensing of the word. God bless you. Please, let's honor him. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am victorious. I have overcome, I am victorious, I have overcome, I am under the shadow of your wings, your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Yeah. I am, I I I Mantles are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. For the kings to arise, for revival to return. For the kings to be born, for revival to return. Yeah. Ali Ali O, oh. Ali O, oh. oh. Ali Ali O, Baba Shalaba Ko Sabrande Gebele Ko Siada, Ali Ali O. Can you lift your voice in one minute and ask the Lord for an encounter yet again, even by His Word? Is someone praying. Declare by the Spirit that your heart is opened and prepared 
for an extraordinary encounter tonight. Shabaka sobraska beleko shabrendeges, shaleska vranda barato sabrendege de belekos. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we pray that you will glorify your son in our midst. Thank you for Global Impact Church. Thank you for the angel over this house. Thank you for Recharge Conference. Bless our hearts yet again. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, I want to teach on a very interesting um, subject that the Lord put in my heart in line with the theme of the conference and I trust that in addition to all that has come from this altar to us God will enrich us he will empower us in the name of Jesus um, God's method has always been his word I would always like to emphasize this the way he lifts men is through his word the way he empowers men is through his word the way he heals is by his word the way he lifts is by his word john 1 3 and without him was not anything made that was made that means outside of his participation there is nothing that can find itself as far as form or fashion or liberty is concerned without him was not anything made that was made hallelujah revelation chapter 19 we we'll begin our reading from verse 11. i am convinced that the believers exploit in this kingdom is predicated upon many factors among them is the depth of your conviction your persuasion about who god is hallelujah and the integrity of his word your confidence is absolutely dependent on your knowledge the depth of your encounter the antidote to fear the antidote to doubt the antidote to uncertainty the key to stability of heart the truest sponsor of audacity in the kingdom is an encounter with the god of the bible there is nothing else that will impart the confidence that genuine encounters bring so let's trust God to help our hearts tonight. I have a two-part series. I'll start tonight and then we'll wrap up tomorrow. Faithful and true. Revelations 19 from verse 11. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me turn just to read. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war next verse his eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name that no man knew except himself 13 he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god so the one who is called the word of god is also called faithful and true the first thing i want to establish tonight is that god as mighty as he is as supposedly mysterious as he is he desires to be known and he desires to make himself known this is the first reality i want to establish in this conference that god wants his people to know him he desires to be known in as much as there is no searching of his understanding the bible says in as much as through the span of eternity we will still learn god but he still desires that his people get to know him you must settle this for a fact that god desires to be known generally speaking as revealed from scripture there are four biblical platforms by which a believer gets to know god um, it is important that anyone who seeks to know god genuinely 
must submit to the limits of the provisions that scripture allows in our pursuing the knowledge of God we are not given the liberty to invent our strategy the strategies um, to knowing God accurately have been provided and our assignment is to walk in keeping with the platforms four of them just for your knowledge very quickly number one the first platform that the Bible provides to help any man get to know God is the scripture the scripture very quickly second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 to sec to 17 second Timothy 15 it says and that from a child can we have kjv and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture the bible says which is able to make you wise even unto salvation hallelujah second timothy 3 15 to 17. thank you and then it says all scripture is given by inspiration of god all scripture and it is profitable for doctrine reproof correction and instruction in righteousness to what end next verse it says that the man of God may be perfect the word perfect there is matured entire thoroughly furnished even unto good works so everyone who desires to know God the Bible recommends scripture in scripture we find the character of god revealed are we together the bible contrasts the character of god as against other gods other deities and and all other platforms of faith communications and the bible leaves us with an instruction that scripture is profitable that on the strength of scripture we can know the character of God and we can know his modus operandi the bible calls it his ways number two the second way that the Bible recommends that we learn God is through the study of his names. Please pay attention. The study of his names. The study of his names. In Exodus chapter 3 from verse 13 to 15. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 13 down to 15. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when... I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your father hath sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? He says, What shall I say unto them? Very intelligent question. Moses is saying, I will not have the audacity and the confidence to stand before the nation of Israel, a people who had been in slavery at that time for 430 years, and then to confront the Pharaoh not knowing who has sent me. The problem is not the message. The problem is I need an encounter with the God of the Bible. And he said, next verse, the Lord said unto him, I am that I am, he said. Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent you hallelujah so we can know God by studying his names you see the names of God capture various dimensions of the possibilities contained in him as you study the names of God you learn God is so vast that he has to fragment himself through his names so that every believer who needs to learn him um, will pick his name and there it his names are like a ladder into the knowledge of God so every time a manifestation of him is revealed in the people he captures that dimension in a name so that every time you want to learn and see that dimension you study that name so he calls himself Rapha Jaira Sikeno same God different dimensions of operation and then he even names himself after the experiences that men had with him like the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob same God but his operation with these three people are very different the God of Abraham 
talks about his portrait of a blessed man how he calls a man and blesses him are we together the God of Isaac how he's able to supply and keep a man even through famine and unfavorable situations the God of Jacob is the God of encounters that he can turn a man who is a cheat and a supplanter even to become are we together now it says for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his tie, blessed him. The Bible says the sun arose and he called that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So every time you desire an encounter, God recommends the God of Jacob or the experience of Jacob as the template. He says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath what? yes or sworn deceitfully he says that this is the generation of them that seek him oh jacob that means you seek him in the similitude of jacob so i'm saying that you you study the names of god what rafa will do is not the same thing as sikeno or jaira is the same god but the mode of operation as captured in these names differ are we together so we can use the names of god as prophetic ladders to know god number three the third way that we know god as revealed in scripture is through the person jesus jesus himself according to scripture came as a revelation of God Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12 to 17 but the verse of emphasis is 15 Colossians 1 please write for reference it says giving thanks unto the father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light 13 now it says who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his their son the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption the bible says through the blood even the forgiveness of sins let's read 15 together if you can see ready one to read who is the image of the invisible god hold on who is the image of the invisible god jesus christ so the mysterious god that the prophets did not know the mysterious god that many people just knew in types and shadows jesus came as the manifestation he gave form and visibility to god are we together so that we use jesus as a reference to correct our prior understanding about god so whatever the prophets told us about god whatever um was told us about god prior to his appearance he he came as a marking script to edit our understanding of God so that whatever was not captured in the life of Jesus we have a right to vet it even if the prophets proposed it it didn't matter what they said about God in light of Jesus now the presence of Jesus now gives us the authority to question everything they said about God that we do not find in him for instance the bible says the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love we have a right to question that statement until we see that reality manifest in jesus he says i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness we have to verify if we do not find that at work in the life of Jesus, then we know that something was wrong with the perception of the prophets or those who documented anything they wrote about God. Are we together now? Yes. So Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophets, had in this last day spoken to us through his son, whom he had appointed to be heir over all things. Verse 3, he says, who is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Upholding all things, the Bible says, by the word of his power do you believe that so the way that we learn god is by studying jesus and the gospels are a very fair compendium of the work of jesus on earth the synoptic accounts matthew mark and luke and john document the experiences of those who were closest with him while he walked upon earth are we together now so that when we learn we can learn his ways and we can learn him 
through the lens of the gospels this is very important the fourth way very quickly that we know god as revealed in scripture is through our experiences god so designed our walk with him such that our experiences are not a waste that there is something about our experiences that can help us learn God. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Let's read it together when we have it projected. Is God speaking to someone already? Job 42 and verse 5. One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. In other words, someone had told me about you, but now experience. There is something about the believer's experience. Are we together? God is able to grant you encounters through experience, and it solidifies your knowledge of him. So these are the four scriptural ways with which the believer, the believer is given the liberty to explore any and all of these four dimensions any other strategy that you invent to try to know god you will find another kind of spirit that is not the god of heaven are we together if it is outside scripture if it is outside the names of god if it is outside the person jesus and outside of your experiences you will never truly know god are we learning now this is very very important now let me pick the subject of names names are very very important the bible talks to us about names we see that when jesus walked upon the earth um, he mandated adam right from genesis to name the animals and names were so powerful that at the point where he encountered men he would even change their names like abram to abraham sarai to sarah cephas to peter are we together names are so important that god places emphasis emphasis on names generally the name of a person reveals many things about that person number one it is a means of identification so if i say john i don't expect everybody to stand up there will be an individual or a group of people with that name am i right and so it is a means of identification number two names try to communicate areas of specialty and expertise for instance if i say doctor immediately it tells you by mentioning doctor it tells you that person is a specialist in the area of medicine are we together you cannot hear the word doctor and be thinking a carpenter or some engineer somewhere most likely your mind will go to medicine are we together if you hear barrister you're not thinking a stethoscope and an injection when you hear barrister, you're most likely thinking of a legal practitioner. So names help you to understand the area of expertise. Usually a man's expertise is captured in his name. Please follow carefully so that you understand what we are discussing. Hallelujah. Names also reveal dimensions of specialty so if i say you are a doctor i'm saying that largely your knowledge has been limited to a particular field are we together now names describe the area you have dedicated your life to specialize in this is the reason why when moses asked god he said what is your name what he was saying is what is your area of specialty because he was trained in egypt and there were thousands of gods named after their specialty the god of fertility would not double himself in another thing so he said god i'm sure you are an expert in an area and god said how do i fragment myself now he simply said i am that i am you see that was a very very thorough description in other words moses there is nothing you think about that is not possible within me i am not one of those gods that has been mandated to specialize in an area no when you talk of fertility, you talk of gods of agriculture, they have their specialty. So you, you were as powerful in those days to the degree to which you encountered the various gods. If you encounter the God who prospers in agriculture and you don't encounter the God of war, you would have a problem in battle. And so he said, now how do I add you to that list of gods? And God comes to Moses and says, no, I'm not one of them. I don't operate like that. I am that I am. Are we together? 
So when you talk of Jireh, you talk of Rapha, you talk of Sikenu, you are not talking of different gods. You are talking of the same God who fragmented himself in several dimensions to help you understand him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now the Bible gives us a very interesting name that he is called in Revelation chapter 11 where we read, he said he is called faithful and true please listen carefully if you do not understand this you will not even understand the covenant and you will not even understand faith faithful and true it's not just what he does the bible says is who he is and that same rider upon the horse is called the word of god so that you are not confused so there is a dimension of god called faithful and true that the bible mandates we study hallelujah the word faithful is very important to be faithful means i wrote here to be consistent to be faithful means to be trustworthy to be faithful means to be dependable it means to be dedicated when you say a person and god in this case is faithful you are saying he's consistent are we together now there is no variableness he is trustworthy he is dependable he is dedicated to be true as simple as that word is you'll be surprised how hard it will be to find a meaning for that word you know what it means to be true to be true means to be accurate to be true means to be authentic to be true means to be verifiable so that you will vet what your faith is standing upon are we together now bible faith is predicated upon an understanding there is something about god you must know to be able to operate bible faith so we say that when god is true we mean he's accurate we mean he's authentic no suspicion in dealing with him you're not dealing with someone who is trying to play tricks with you and then you are dealing with a God that can be verified. He's not afraid to be vetted. Are we together now? That the Bible is a compendium of his track record through dispensations, working with all kinds of people so that it can help you see that he's worthy of your trust and your commitment. Are we together now? This is very important. Faithful and true. A God that is verifiable, one who is not, he does not shake, he does not depend. You see, it is once, once God depends on another person for his stability, it will be impossible for him to be faithful and true. The quality of being faithful and true demands that there is no other authority above you as it is to God. Because it then means everybody is subject to to the way the authority above him behaves are we together now i am a man under authority i say unto one go and he goes come and he comes am i to am i am, am, if the authority above you mandates that you take a decision even if it's against your conscience loyalty demands that you obey so when the bible says god is faithful and true it means that he does not submit to any other person who manipulates his character are we together now there is no other authority so nobody can tell god change he's not obeying anybody are, are you understanding what i'm teaching you now yes that when god the bible says he is faithful and true it means when he says yes there is nobody who will threaten him into walking against that which he has said i can say i want to bless you but the company that i work for can change my decision because i submit to them i will obey are we together but for god there is no other authority above him to manipulate if there was an authority above god then we can suspect his statements because it means his statements will be subject to the authority hmm. faithful and true faithful and true faithful and true i can tell one of the protocol people 
meet me by five o'clock and he may intend to come there but pastor can give him another assignment are you seeing with respect to my dealings with him he was unfaithful but it was not because of an intrinsic deficiency he had to submit to an authority above him so when we say god is consistent it means through all eternity what he has said he has said there is no government that will rise to threaten what it is that he has said listen if you do not understand this you will not understand the covenant and you will not understand faith how do you stand confident upon something you have not seen and you can have the audacity to tell people i know what i'm saying there has to be an understanding something about god not just what you want to obtain you need to know god first hmm. consistent trustworthy dependable accurate verifiable now there are two attributes of God very quickly two attributes of God that make him faithful and true number one is called his integrity a man is only faithful and true to the degree to which he has integrity don't assume you understand what I'm saying please pay attention Hebrews chapter 6 please from verse 13 integrity Hebrews 6 13 it says for when God made a promise to Abraham because he could not swear by any greater you understand what I'm saying now the Bible says he swore by himself in other words to show you his determination he was willing to submit to a higher authority in doing so if there was he took out time to search and since there was no other authority higher than him the Bible says he swore by himself next verse saying surely in blessing I will bless you to Abraham now and in multiplying I will multiply thee next verse he says and so when Abraham patiently endured he obtained the promise uh-huh he says for men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is an end to all strife next verse he says wherein God willing more abundantly to show the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel the Bible says he confirmed it by an oath read 18 with me as loud as you can if you're a Christian one to read that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie uh-huh stop we might have what we might have what one more time we might have what a modern day translation here is guarantee that by these two immutable things in other words god is saying i know you as men you are frail you vacillate in your convictions how can i convince you that i am trustworthy and the bible says he used a promise in other words he made a commitment but he said abraham i know you will doubt me because of the reality of the things that you see so let me add something to it as my commitment and the bible says an oath an oath that he said if i told you that i will bless you you can believe that i will do it and in case doubt wants to creep up in your mind remember that it was not only a promise that i made but that there is an oath upon it do you know what an oath is an oath is a self-inflicting disadvantage you bring to yourself in case you do not keep your word are we together now that you make a commitment and you say if for any reason i default i met out these judgments upon myself or whoever it is that is making that oath and the Bible says, by the consciousness of that promise and that oath, the believer may find a consolation that when God speaks, when he says, I am doing something, he has the integrity. Please say integrity. My Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23, 19. This is a very, very interesting statement. God is not a man god became a man but god is not a man he became a man 
are we together now for the purpose of redemption Jesus is today seated at the right hand of the father as man the God man are we together now but God is not a man that he should lie. He's telling you that men have a weakness by reason of wearing a mortal body. They lie. To lie does not mean to say something untrue. To lie means that you cannot make true what you say. There are two dimensions to lying. Number one is an untrue information. But the other one is lack of capacity to make what I say become. It is still a lie so the Bible says God is not like men in other words I can say I want to help you my desire is sincere but the wherewithal to make it happen I do not have with respect to that statement I have become a liar so the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie in other words before he speaks he vets his ability to bring it to pass everything you see God say is a conclusion that he has come within himself that it is within my power to make good what I have said say integrity one more time say integrity hmm. I'm saying this because when a man walks with God God is going to give you instructions and tell you things that except you have this background knowledge, there is no basis of believing and walking with God. You will take risks that do not make sense. The basis of your audacity is what I am sharing with you. That while your optical eyes cannot see anything that is as at yet appearing, but your conviction is the fact that God is not a man. And so when situations and circumstances try to threaten your confidence, Confidence, you are reminded again that God is not a man that he should lie do you know what that means if for any reason by mistake God calls a shepherd a king he becomes a king immediately it's not that God how do I explain this now listen there is a system within the economy of God that makes sure that what he says comes to pass are we together now yes this is why in making men become like him he equipped us also with the agencies that make our words come to pass he gave us the Holy Spirit he gave us his name so that we will function like him are we together now integrity integrity i do not know anyone who has walked with god and has commanded levels of exploits in life who has not taken giant leaps of faith that does not make sense risks that you cannot explain in the kingdom the spelling of faith is r-i-s-k one more time r-i-s-k that is the correct spelling of faith How does God move his servant to come to the good land here and then to you see when God talks to you he does not talk as if he's talking to a man he talks as if he's talking to himself because it is his ability that will bring what he said to pass one of the ways you know it is God that is leading you is because the version of you hearing will not be the version that will produce that result every time God tells you what you can do it was not God that you heard Are we learning yes, so God looks at you and says go and raise nations across the globe now he's speaking as if he's not aware you need a visa he's speaking as if he's not aware you need partners you see he's saying that because there is something within him that sponsors what he says number one is his integrity someone shout to say integrity let every doubt and every hear, fear hear you shout it say integrity it comes from the word integer same within as without god does not make a statement and then he goes back feeling insecure why did i do this no his integrity that by these two immutable things by these two immutable things number two the second attribute that makes God faithful and true is his power or his ability this is very important 
Exodus chapter 15 from verse 6 to 11, his ability. Now, you can have the desire to be true, but you may not have the wherewithal to make it happen. Are we together? Yes. I can tell you I want to pay your school fees, and I sincerely desire to. The problem is not integrity. The problem is the wherewithal. I may have made that statement also expecting someone to give me money. Are we together? So I failed not because I lacked integrity, but I lacked the power, the ability, the wherewithal. So integrity is powerful, but integrity is only complete when there is ability. The Bible says, Exodus chapter 15 from verse 6, Thy right hand, O God, is what? Let me read it from here. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power it says thy right hand O Lord had dashed into pieces the enemy verse 7 it says and in the greatness of the excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee let's read on thou settest forth thy wrath uh -huh. reading to 11 Verse 8 now. Hold on. You've been breathing all your life. Will you not fear a man who used the breath of his nostrils to cause this kind of thing? A man's breath that can part a flood, heather and teether. What then can his hand do? What happens when he arises then? So when the psalmist says, arise, let God arise. hallelujah now glorious in power he says listen to me God does not just have integrity the Bible says power belongs to him God's power was not outsourced your power was outsourced you had to depend on the Holy Ghost you still depend eternally on the Holy Ghost but God's power does not increase it does not reduce he does not grow I hope you know that God does not learn, God does not grow. He is the perfection of all things, the zenith of all things. If God grows, who supervises his growth? If God learns, who is the mentor? Listen, you need to understand this and your situation becomes small in light of his ability. So when God says, I'm giving you a land in Lagos, you don't sit down wondering where will I get it the earth is the Lord's the earth is the Lord's everybody met land on earth nobody was born with it so nobody can bully that prophecy out of you yours is did God say it and listen the Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. It says the increase of the field is for all. That means there is your portion. This revelation already gives you confidence. There is my portion somewhere because God is the God of portions. The increase of the earth is for all, not for some. And that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field. Are we together? his integrity so when he's called faithful and true notice what makes the word of god powerful is that he is faithful and true that's why he told you that those two names go hand in hand that the word of god is important if there is no faithfulness and there is no truthfulness why do we believe god why do we believe his word because contained within the word of god is his name faithful and true when you understand this now you can begin to delve into the matters of the covenant and the matters of faith having this at the back of your mind that god is faithful and true now Daniel chapter 11, please, and verse 32b. The Bible says, for sake of time, but the people that do know, <laughs> never said the people that do have, never said the people who come close to, 
It says the people that do know their God. Two things will happen to them. Number one, capacity. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. They shall be strong. Number two, they shall do, not talk. It will start with speaking, but it must end in doing. There are people who discuss exploits. There are people who wish exploits. There are people who document wishes of exploits. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Do exploits. Do exploits. The end of the knowledge of God and the pursuit of the things of God is number one, your conformity. But number two, the manifestation of divine possibilities that happen to you. So you may be frail by birth, but you have outsourced an intelligence that has translated you. That your life no longer becomes ordinary because there is an understanding, there is a consciousness, an orientation about God that has swallowed up your limitations. You will dare things that ordinary men cannot do. And the reason is not because you just want to be bold. You are standing upon an understanding. He looked at him while he was walking on water and Peter wondered, is this man an ordinary man at all? How could he be walking? on water he's heavier than I mean this he, he should sink and he said this is a possibility that is also true for you he says if it be thou bid me come call me into that realm of reality and he said come if you believe that come and the Bible says he stepped out and he began to walk on water and because God asked him to come even when he was going down he took responsibility to preserve him because God is not a man listen carefully that is how far he can go to defend provided you acted on his word even though he was sinking he said I can't let you sink I, the problem is your understanding but I have integrity I must still defend for my name's sake do you know if he left Peter and Peter got into the water and died are we together now the prior obedience would not matter it will still prove the powerlessness of God for instance in that scenario and then his lack of integrity God had to hold him to say it was on account of your believing me that you there is still a lot to correct about your understanding but for now I will still have to defend you because it was based on my word that you took that step that is why you keep looking at champions as if they will fail, yet they never fail. As if they will fail, yet they never fail. 20 years they are still standing. It looks like they will fail. But th there, is, there is the jealousy of God that defends their understanding. It says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body it says I called him alone what a risk you call a man out of all of the Chaldeans as an unbeliever and you begin to propose certain blessings to him in Genesis chapter 12 you find that in 2 and 3 I will bless you I will make your name great I will bless him that bless them that bless you him that curse you will I curse and then the last verse verse 3 says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed you are talking to a man who has no child and in that blessing there was no mention I told you God does not talk to men like he's talking to men he's talking to a man as if he's not even aware this man was in a state where his passion was to have a son and God is telling him there are nations that will be blessed because of you and he stops there The only time God ever responded about Isaac was when Abraham asked him and said, what will you do to me seeing that I go childless? Oh, here is Eliezer, here is this. And God said, no, you will have your own seed. In other words, God was saying, I am so responsible. Contain within this promise. Are we together now? For this promise to come to pass, you must certainly have a child. Otherwise, the promise will not come to pass. In other words, your anxiety is just your being a human being. You are just acting as a human being. But within this promise, 
it mandates that you must have a child otherwise it will not come to pass Abraham come out count the stars and he was lost count the stars and he was lost finally Abraham said God so is this what you mean that my children and my influence will be like the stars of the heaven finally God got the attention of Abraham the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited unto him for righteousness are we together we live in a world today where it looks like God decided to isolate a few people and cause their lives to emit some levels of excellence and and power and grace but my Bible says the Lord the same Lord is rich unto all in as much as there is the election of grace but it is every believers destiny in Christ to excel it is every believers destiny in Christ to rise to a level where your life becomes a testament that Jesus is alive I want you to know know that your producing result in the kingdom brings glory to the name of the Lord John chapter 15 from verse 8 it says herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples John 15 and verse 16 you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you he says that you should go and bear much fruit and that your fruit should remain are we together Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 Paul puts it beautifully he says we are his workmanship his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works you know what that means we are the tools that God uses to display his glory that every time God wants to make Nigeria Africa know who he is he brings you as his workmanship the stethoscope the injection that is the workmanship of a doctor are we together now and then chapter 3 and verse 10 Paul was speaking and he said to the intent that now unto principalities and powers by, might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of God something about the excellency of God and his person manifest through your life it should compel all and sundry to bring glory to the name of the Lord in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 it says you are the salt of the earth but that if the, the, the salt has lost its saltiness wherewith shall it be made salty again it is good for nothing except to be thrown and trodden under foot but men then it says you are the light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel the Bible says but they put it on a lampstand so that it will give light to everybody within the building verse 16 now says permit your light let your light so shine not before spirits not before angels before men that they may see he wants them to see your good works and by doing so he says they will glorify your father which is in heaven there are dimensions of the glory of God your life will never command except you know that God is faithful and God is true there's no time to begin to tell you stories but you are seated right here in an auditorium and under the grace of a man that is proof that the faithfulness of God than the reality that he is true was not is that when the Bible declares that God is faithful and true he did not lie by making such statements apostle how will the money for my house come from this revelation not a business business only gives your revelation a room to find expression listen listen to me business and what you do in itself by itself will not prosper you you prosper off your understanding first your understanding of God then your understanding of yourself then your understanding of the cosmos so there are many people who are struggling to labor and they have not constructed their understanding about God they believe that arbitrarily a man of God respectfully speaking you cannot get up and be trusted with the grace for nations when you do not believe that God can do much with you he is faithful when God says for instance in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and to observe all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all say all 
all the nations of the earth not just europe not just america not just the caribbeans not just asia he said all ladies and gentlemen all was not a parable all means all that means there is no nation you step into that you should be rejected out of that nation you are carrying something within you the word of god has mandated that all nations acknowledge you as a blessing and that all these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you shall come upon you and shall overtake you my question is who is speaking forget about what he's saying who is speaking you need to vet the who first then you can believe the what most of us are focusing on what he's saying and we forget about who is speaking if i tell you I'm going to give you say a million naira now the first thing you do is not to doubt the statement the first thing you do is to vet me as a person can this man bring out a million naira now you see that if you have a problem believing what God said the real place of correction is not what it is an encounter with the one speaking when you trust me everything that comes out of me becomes believable am i right on that yes if an ambassador or a consul of an embassy looks at you and says i like you come and have your visa stamped 10 years whatever nation by tomorrow because you are aware of the status and the ability of that person and the fact that he is too serious to be playing games with you you start dancing without a visa stamp and if people ask you they say look most people have not gotten these visas you laugh at you don't know who spoke to me your own it was an agent that spoke to you but i had the opportunity to speak with the consular so when you carry the bible and say i am the head and not the tail and you are acting as if god lied the problem is not the statement the problem is that you need an encounter with he who is called faithful and true faithful and true faithful and true three hebrew boys caught up in the fire that at the sound of the timbrel and instruments of worship they will bow to this 90 feet stature and from the place of encounter they came and said listen we are not just young people who are intelligent oh king we respect you but in this matter we will not bow he said our god will save us there is something we know about him are we together now yes that i can rejoice in the god of my salvation and that even if he does not save us let it be known to you that we will not bow and the bible says that the king was angry and he made them to turn the fan the furnace seven times hotter to a point that those who threw them were burned by the fire but these gentlemen stepped in and the bible says they saw the fourth man faithful and true and the king said he was like the son listen to me the Hebrew boys never said, please come and help us. They only made, the more you would make your declarations of faith, you put pressure on his integrity. That God knows that you are saying it loud to the hearing of everybody. That God has said in 2023, you will not fail, you will not go down. And whilst you are saying that, you are putting pressure on his integrity. Faithful and true. Hallelujah. Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 we'll find somewhere to pray Genesis 21 1 and 2 someone who believes God I want you to read this as loud as you can one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah stop 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 don't rush you're going to replace Sarah with your name. Listen, hold on, hold on. Something in your life needs to hear this confession now. Are you ready now? One, two, go. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman as he has said. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. God never does as you want. God never does as you wish 
he only does what he says so the only way to get him to do is to get him to say God is bound to his word that even if God wants to move this way he has to check whether he has said that movement should happen this way so the only way to see the power of God is to bring the word that is why he matched the quality faithful and true and he said that same faithful and true is also the word of God in other words when the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so they say so simply because they want God to do so and they are not saying what they want they are saying what he said that is consistent with what he wants so it will look like God is answering you but he's really answering himself it is only that the person who said it is you so it will look like your answer and the Lord visited Sarah, not as she desired, not as she cried. He only visited her as he had said. And he did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited the man of God as he has said. The Lord visited the family as he has said. The Lord did unto the businessman as he has spoken. Don't expect a doing if you cannot show me what he has said. The basis for the doing of God in your life is a rich capture and the believing of what he has said. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Many years ago, I read this scripture, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. And I saw that he said, you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth. I was in one room, but I believed it. Because... The person who spoke is called faithful and true. The dynamics of how it will happen is none of your business. The Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. There are times you will not see wind. There are times you will not see rain. Yet, the valley shall be filled with water. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. If you understand this revelation and you stay with God to allow it sink into your spirit, your life will become a marvel, first to yourself and then to all around you. Hallelujah. So the Bible is full of the speakings of God. This Bible that you hold and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to help you understand the things that he has said hallelujah if he has called you blessed you are blessed if he has called you favored you are favored if he has called you lifted now when you understand his integrity and you understand his ability are we together it now gives you the basis to obey because faith in one word is obedience performance is not just at the instance of God saying it performance in your life is at the instance of your obeying what he has said there is no doubt that God can do but you may never see his doings in your life until your obedience connects to his integrity connects to his ability faith in one word is obedience saying what he has said but in addition to that obeying the conditions that are connected to what he has said this is now where you begin to come to the realm of covenant we'll hopefully deal with that tomorrow because you see there are three levels by which men can operate with the realm of the spirit that includes God, but any operates with the realm of the spirit. The least level of operation is called emotions. You can operate with your world and with the realm of the spirit from the realm of emotions. The trouble with emotions is that they vacillate. So it is the weakest platform for relating with anybody or anything. Are we together now? I can say I 
will give you one million naira because I was so excited yesterday. Then somebody will say, April hey, fool. And you come tomorrow and I say, look, I'm not in the mood to talk. Emotions is the weakest basis for relationship between any two people. The second level higher than emotion is called reason, which is based on logic. So you are constrained to a modus operandi that is now higher than your emotions. Are we together? But even at that, logic can fail you. The highest platform for relationships, when God wants to take serious any man and anything, he operates on a realm called covenant because covenant is non-emotional. Covenant is beyond logic. Are we together now? So anything that God takes serious, he connects a covenant relationship to it. Covenant. If you meet a lawyer and say, sign, I will pay the school fees of this boy till university. You have signed that document. It does not matter whether the boy tells you you are stupid. You may be angry, but there is something that is binding. And except you want to default on your integrity and then your ability. Are we together now? So the Bible tells us, listen carefully. It says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth out of my mouth. He does not just do that for your sake. He does it for his name's sake. Another word, credibility, reputation. Are we together now? yes because his name god does not just protect his people he also protects his name he says oh lord our god how excellent is your name standing here tonight are people who are trusting to see the manifest power of god in their lives standing here tonight are people who are trusting god to turn all kinds of negative situations in their lives and listen ladies and gentlemen with all humility i can tell you i know what god can do with men who take him serious i know what god can do with men who believe him that he can turn your life into a sign and a wonder that your life becomes a living epistle you become a continuation of someone's bible study your life becomes a compendium of possibilities that people look at your life and say can god go this far with men they say these are, are they that turn the world upside down. But all of that, it does not happen just because of your pedigree. It does not happen just because of who you are, your name, whatever it is. It happens because you have come to a point of understanding. You have outsourced a superior orientation that the word of God is potent because he is faithful and true faithful the rider upon the horse and true if he tells you i am coming to you to visit you he told abraham that god's people the nation of israel will get into captivity and it will be for a period of 400 years and even though there was delay i always found out why 30 years was added do you know why it was added i believe that that time was added because of the lapse in preparing the vessel who will be the deliverer not because of god's commitment because God will have to walk with the will of the person who, who he will use as a deliverer. So it is possible God can tell you that in January I will lift you and the lifting comes November. It is not because God is slack. It is because your participatory role prolonged that situation up until your obedience was complete. So the day your obedience is complete is the date of your manifestation. When God speaks every day is today, it is, it is up to your obedience to make it today indeed or to prolong it indefinitely. A thousand years are a day before him. So if he says today, he is always right based on his calculation. Your miracle, if you postpone it to next year, it is still today in the mind of God. But the day your obedience is complete, that is the day manifestation happens. Are we together now? Now, there are three things I want you to leave this place with. Number one is that God desires to be known. God desires to be known. Listen, most people do not press for encounter. They just press for verses in the Bible. As wonderful as that is, they will only 
he become empty historic materials with no power and potency to change you are we together you can read about me by following or reading my book but you have to encounter me all of the people who wrote what we call the bible today they wrote based on their encounters their confidence was based on their encounters bible faith is not just based on recitation bible faith is based on an encounter with god who is faithful and true the one who has integrity and the one who has all power one story and then we'll pray my apologies for taking your time listen carefully years ago i had a vision pastor my eyes were opened and i saw like a giant door like an ancient gate and that gate was made of smaller doors you know how a, a post office that you see those small small boxes yes and i noticed that it was opening and closing all of them they were opening and closing and on every one of the tiny boxes were a scripture written and it will open and then light will come out and then it will close and I was wondering what kind of vision this was and the Spirit of God began to teach me that every one of those scriptures have the power component attached to them that the day you truly understand the revelation behind the scripture the light that comes out of it is the grace for performance so every time you have a scripture that you have not received the light component you may keep saying it as important as that is you may keep um, you know just writing it and just saying I am believing it but it will never find performance in your life until you truly believe it the light that is back of it in Acts chapter 4 and verse 30, 33 the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and it says great grace was upon them all with great power great power they believe what he said and he said no I will not only send you with a word and a message there is a power component carry ye in Jerusalem you know the message you know what to tell people but you need the power component to defend your speakings hallelujah listen to me the reason why a man of God will speak over your life and things begin to change and respectfully speaking another man will speak and you will still say amen to both and nothing will happen it's not just that your amen is not loud enough it is that many times we speak from the standpoint of our spiritual orientation are we together now your understanding is the trigger that releases the power of God if you speak from a standpoint of ignorance or religion you will only be making an empty noise with no potency God designed the kingdom to operate such that the power of God is released at the point of understanding. It takes more than desire to command power. It takes more than desire to command possibilities. You must take out time and invest in having a genuine encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand all of these dynamics from that standpoint. God never spoke until the spirit of revelation began to hover most times we speak without the spirit being there god himself was patient until the spirit hovered around then he spoke and god said in the presence of the spirit and there was you don't just say because you found it as powerful as that is your saying has power when it comes from the standpoint of revelation most believers therefore our bankruptcy of seeing the power and the possibilities of God the inability to command genuine consistent ever increasing results in our lives is not a reflection of God's inability is that we have not paid the price to labor in the spirit to have genuine encounters that now make the word of God potent upon our lips and in our lives let God be true and every man a liar that means if my life and your life does not capture certain dimensions of divine possibilities it does not change the fact that God is almighty it does not change the fact that God can do all things but to see those all things work in your life you must press for the revelation of him who is faithful and true 
I'm wrapping up. Look at me. I do not know any man in our modern world today that keeps all his money cash in his house. Are we together? You drop your money with the bank. Your money is with the bank right now. Many of you, you have never seen the GMD or the CEO of that bank. And yet you can keep your money and keep adding to it. Do you know why? Because you have come to a point where you have been convinced that that bank has integrity. Are we together? They have used their track record plus marketing to let you know that your money is safe with them. And you have tested it by going to the ATM. And when you withdrew your 10,000, it came out. You did it again, it came out. Are we together? They tested their own ability and created a system to limit your daily withdrawal so that they don't disappoint you. Are we together now? Is someone learning now? The day you go and use the ATM and it does not bring that money, you have the right to go into the bank because the bank is not the ATM. The ATM is just an expression of the bank. You have confidence that you can enter the bank and you will not be denied access. Are we learning now? So you enter the bank with confidence and then you tell them, I have five million naira here. The day you say, I want it, and they tell you stories, what will happen? There is a compromise on integrity, which most likely may be a reflection of a compromise in their ability and very quickly you may want to withdraw your money or sue them or do whatever it is i'm using banking to help you understand how we work with god it is amazing that some of you have not withdrawn certain amounts for decades it's been in that bank yet you have never called it the bank's money it is your money but it is not with you that is how powerful integrity can work for a man you go to bed and you never are afraid regardless what you hear my money is safe and safe with the bank my money is safe and safe with the bank because when you need to withdraw twenty thousand naira say you stay at the atm and then you withdraw or you give an instruction and it is obeyed immediately listen to me the reason why most people do not believe god is because they have tried to put to work what the word says should happen or what should be in their lives and they have been disappointed again and again now they will not say it to the open they will still speak christian languages but deep within their hearts they've come to an uncomfortable conclusion that this thing bar is just church but in truth it does not work so when you say i want to pray for the sick the sick will stand they don't expect to be healed honestly they hope they will be healed they will be surprised if they are Oh, I want to speak over someone who is trusting God for a change of story. What most people call faith is actually hope. That is usually the final point of squeezing out from a, an atmosphere of despair. But let me tell you the truth. Bible faith is predicated upon your knowledge of who God is. You can stand with certainty that looks like pride to say, I know God will do this. I know that by the end of this year, I will go from glory to glory because i have found out in scripture that the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day we're going to pray and i want you to cry out from your heart give me a revelation give me a revelation of your name as faithful and true a revelation of your integrity a revelation of your ability is someone praying a revelation of your integrity the times that we live in will not afford you to be a casual christian you will find out eventually that your christian experience will only lead to frustration please pray i believe that this conference was put to raise believers that command genuine results not once in a while results not assumed results not exaggerated results genuine results ever increasing consistent because you are dealing with a god that is verifiable he is accurate he is consistent faithful and true to lead me through ministry faithful and true to help me raise my children faithful and true 
to deliver me from every oppression of darkness faithful and true to see to it that I enjoy the blessings of the Lord all the days of my life someone pray in one minute I receive grace I receive grace I receive grace to catch genuinely a revelation of him as faithful and true hallelujah last prayer point from this understanding I want you to cause everything that is not in line with God's word are we together now he said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound you're going to speak be the priest of your life for the next one minute I like you to stand with understanding that he has made us unto our God kings and priests and the Bible declares that we will reign in this life begin to pray and declare over everything that must come into divine alignment is someone praying make decrease by the power of the Holy Spirit a new dimension in ministry the Lord is my light and my salvation in the name of Jesus Christ I access speed I accept help from from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ declare by the Spirit declare by the Spirit declare by the Spirit I have the mind of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ unbelief is far from my life by the power of the Holy Spirit that which God has said to me he will make it good he will bring his word to pass in the name of Jesus he is faithful and he is true hallelujah let me declare over your life for tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I stand in faith with the grace upon the angel in this house alongside every vessel of God in this place and I decree and declare over someone that the season of shame and the season of reproach comes to an end now I decree and declare like the prophet said over Samaria maybe not for everybody but for someone who is believing by this time tomorrow I decree and declare return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says the word is quick and powerful. May these two dimensions speak in your life. May the word bring speed to your life. May the word work powerful in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I decree and declare, whatever has made you cry, you came to this conference crying, saying, Lord, this is the midst of the year, visit me. May the God of our salvation, even the one who is called faithful and true, may he visit you supernaturally. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.